Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6668. SCP-6668 8.58 AM Special Containment Procedures SCP-6668 refers to an ongoing, emergent phenomena, as such, comprehensive containment procedures have yet to be enacted. Interaction with SCP-6668 is to be regulated by the Provisional Research Team, comprised of site <laughs> ongoing situation. Information Blackout Initiated, Leadership Team. Excursion into site <laughs> cafeteria has been suspended. Description, SCP-6668 is a large sinkhole which appeared in the floor of site <laughs> cafeteria at 8.47 local time earlier today. The depth of SCP-6668 has yet to be determined, but is architecturally anomalous. Despite the cafeteria being situated on the third floor, there has been no topographical disruption to the corresponding location on the second floor. Despite showing no prior signs of structural fragility, the cafeteria floor rapidly crumbled, causing junior researcher Morel to descend into the sinkhole. Contact with Morel has yet to be made. Upon appearance of SCP-6668, all food product within the cafeteria, including substances mid-mastication or mid-digestion, rapidly putrefied. Preparations for human exploration of SCP-6668 are currently underway. Addendum, Security Footage Forward, the following is a transcription of footage obtained from the security cameras situated within Site-A Cafeteria the cafeteria is heavily populated, a busy breakfast service is underway. The Department of Agricultural Anomalies sits at one table, having a team breakfast. At the other end of the room, senior researcher Comfoy points to his laptop screen as he addresses the junior staff sat beside him. A small, circular mark appears on the floor in the center of the cafeteria. Site Director Hughes enters the cafeteria and joins the queue for food. Junior researcher Morel stands up from the table at which they are sat, and offers to return the food tray of their colleague, junior researcher Pelletier. The two KISS, HR records indicate Morel and Pelletier have been in an approved and vetted relationship for several years, and Morel makes his way across the room, to the tray return point. As he does so, he steps upon the black mark. Instantaneously, the floor gives way and collapses inward marking the manifestation of SCP-6668. The hole rapidly expands, pulling down the surrounding flooring until it is 5 meters in diameter. Despite the nature of the collapse, the hole formed oval-shaped with well-defined edges. Morel falls into SCP-6668. Those situated close to the anomaly quickly move away from it. Simultaneous to this, all food in the immediate vicinity rapidly decays, Food goods contained in the cafeteria's serving unit sprouts large amounts of fast-growing mold. Several diners spit food from their mouths in haste, with the majority subsequently vomiting. Liquids released by the putrefaction flows off of plates. Adjusting to the situation, several staff members make their way to SCP-6668. On his way over, senior researcher Comfois slips in a puddle of decomposed food, landing badly on his back. Junior researcher Peltier leans over SCP-6668's edge, shouting for junior researcher Morel. Cameras located in the training auditorium, situated directly below the cafeteria, capture no anomalous activity during this period. The auditorium ceiling shows no sign of damage or degradation. A new version of this page is available. Refresh. 9.44 a.m. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-6668-1 and SCP-6668-2 are currently located in the Site cafeteria. The latter's vital signs are to be monitored, with site leadership made aware of any change in condition. Excursion into the former is forbidden. Description, SCP-6668-1 is a sinkhole in the cafeteria's floor of Site SCP-6668-2 is an adult human. Formerly D1812019, 
located adjacent to SCP-6668-1. D-1812019 began to display anomalous properties upon returning from an exploration of SCP-6668-1. A log of this exploration is below. Forward, despite best efforts, it was not possible to discern the depth of SCP-6668 from above. Any light shone into the anomaly experienced a drastic decrease in lumens. A crane was set up over SCP-6668 to allow for exploration. D-1812019 was recruited to explore the anomaly and attempt to locate junior researcher Morell. Exploration was overseen by Site Director Hughes. D-1812019 is strapped into a harness connected to the crane. He is equipped with a standard-issue video recording device and radio communications. He begins to descend into SCP-6668. D-Class, what can you see? Well, nothing yet. It's dark in here. Real dark. Seems big too, as soon as I was below the initial opening I couldn't see the signs no more. It's just, black in every direction. D1812019 continues to descend for two minutes. Ugh, Christ. I'm getting something, a whole fucking something. It reeks down here. It smells worse than the moldy crap up where you are. Are there any discernible features yet? Come again? Can you see anything? Not at all. It's just dark. All dark. D1812019 continues to descend for another three minutes. By this point, he has descended a distance of 37 meters. This should place them eight stories below, on level B5. Hey, what happens if there's like, no bottom? If I can't find your guy, you'll still pull. D1812019 is interrupted by a wet, squelching sound. Stop the crane, stop the crane. D1812019's camera captures them being plunged, up to their waist, into a black viscous liquid at the bottom of SCP-6668. The liquid has only become visible due to the disruption caused by D1812019's partial submersion. Are you at the bottom? Yeah, I've reached it. Areas flooded in some type of black tar. He coughs, it's where that rancid smell's coming from. What does the floor feel like? Uh, I don't know. A floor? It's. He stomps his feet, soft. It gives way a bit when I press down. Can you see anything? D1812019 turns around. The light equipped to their helmet illuminates significantly less of themselves and of the surrounding area than it should. There's a shape. It looks human. Several meters away from D1812019, a shape floats in the liquid, wrapped in a foundation lab coat. Is it Morel? I can't see. It's so bloody dark in here. The body is, it's face down, floating in this, he wretches, tar. I think it's Morel? I can make out a lab coat. All right, grab the body and we'll pull you both out. D1812019 is silent, and does not move. That's an order, get the body and we'll get you out. D1812019 begins to breath heavily as he moves toward the body. I'm about to grab them, get ready to. D1812019 reaches out and pulls the back of the lab coat towards him. The mass contained within the lab coat splinters into smaller parts, which begin to move rapidly. A splashing sound becomes audible as the smaller masses move into the liquid. It's not Morel. It's not Morel. Get me out of here. Get me the fuck out of here. D1812019 is left holding a lab coat. There is no sign of its former occupant. Let's pull him up. D1812019's camera jerks wildly. The splashing sound is still audible. 
Something's in my suit. The 1,812,019 plunges their hands into the liquid and begins hitting at their legs. At the same time, the crane retracts them, distorting their balance, sending D1,812,019 falling into the liquid at the bottom of SCP-6668. He screams until his face is submerged too. The crane pulls D1,812,019 out of the liquid, and he begins to ascend from SCP-6668. He is silent. Their camera is obfuscated by the thick, black liquid. Upon recovery from SCP-6668-1, D1,812,019 was unconscious. They were removed from their harness and medical staff were called for. Before they could arrive, D1,812,019 began to levitate. Now designated SCP-6668-2, D1,812,019 is currently suspended in the air, in a non-responsive state, one meter above the floor of Side A's cafeteria. Sounds of movement are audible from within SCP-6668-1. A new version of this page is available. Refresh. 10.27 a.m. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-6668-1 and SCP-6668-2 are currently located in the Site A cafeteria. Excursion into the former is forbidden. Description, SCP-6668-1 is a large sinkhole located in the floor of Site A's cafeteria. SCP-6668-2 is D1,812,019 who was lowered into SCP-6668-1 and subsequently developed anomalous properties, which have greatly progressed since this file's last update at 944. A video log of these properties is attached below. A team of researchers overseen by Site Director Hughes are positioned around D1,812,019. The latter levitates above the ground, arms thrown behind his back, head angled awkwardly upwards, Suddenly D1,812,019's eyes, which had rolled upwards, snap back and glance rapidly around him. He makes eye contact with researcher Comtois. D1,812,019's Adam's apple begins to move. Director, he's awake. As his throat continues to gyrate, D1,812,019's lips begin to quiver. He's trying to speak. Site Director Hughes runs over to D1,812,019, dragging a chair behind him. He stands on it, positioning himself at the same height as the D-Class. It leans towards his mouth, trying to listen. Come on, what are you trying to tell us? As D1,812,019's lips slowly open, a small paw is pushed through. This is followed by a large, wet rodent, resembling the genus Rattus, crawling out of the D-class's mouth. Once the bulk of its body has emerged, the rat falls to the ground, its tail trailing down D1,812,019's lower lip and chin. It hits the ground with a thud, and quickly scurries away. What on earth? Before the researchers can react, a wet slurping noise can be heard from D1,812,019's direction. A second, Larger rodent is attempting to crawl out his mouth. Unnoticed by the researchers, small red dots begin to appear on his D-class uniform. Get maintenance in here. Someone try and catch that rat. D1,812,019's right cheek begins to bulge outwards. The second rodent's exit has been impinged by a third rodent appearing to have crawled up the esophagus. As the two fight to get out, D1,812,019's left eye suddenly collapses in on itself into a white, damp pulp. From within the socket, a rodent's front paws emerge, scratching at its surroundings. The right eye darts rapidly between the researchers surrounding him. The red dots on D1,812,019's uniform have grown. One of the rodents located within his mouth has clawed entirely through his cheek, it pulls itself through and falls to the floor as the other rodent situated within the oral cavity exits through the mouth. The damage to D1,812,019's face has resulted in greater visibility. As the rodents leave the oral cavity, another can be seen crawling up from the back of his throat. Ugh. 
Without warning, a large laceration forms on D1812019's right wrist, straying site director Hughes in blood. He falls off the chair and lands squarely on the floor. A rodent begins to claw its way out of the laceration, covered in blood. As soon as it emerges, it is followed by another. Rodent discharge has continued from D1812019's throat, with them now numbering approximately 50. The zygomatic and frontal bones surrounding his left eye have begun to crumble, allowing space for rodents to begin to emerge from the cavity. Movement begins within D1812019's uniform. The flow of rodents from his right wrist has intensified to the point of severing his hand straight off. As the hand hits the floor, rodents begin to flow from the wound, as other rodents begin to crawl out of both his ear orifices. Help! Someone help me up! The number of rodents in the vicinity is within high triple figures. While some run to the corners of the room or into the ventilation shafts, others begin to swarm Hughes, preventing him from standing. Researcher Comtois attempts to approach Hughes, but is quickly set upon by the rodents himself, which begin to crawl up his legs. I can't get near you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Comtois attempts to swat the rodents off his clothes, as he turns and flees the cafeteria. He is swiftly followed by the remaining researchers. D1812019 skull has lost most of its structural integrity yet rodents continue to emerge from the deflated skin at the top of his neck. His uniform ruptures open, releasing a flood of rodents into the room. They swiftly give chase to the fleeing researchers. Director Hughes screams. As the rodents clamber across his face, he covers his mouth with his hands to prevent them entering his mouth, which they constantly attempt to do. On his stomach and across his body, other rodents attempt to tear at his skin with their paws and teeth. One rodent bites Hugh's left hand, instinctively causing him to jerk it away from his face. Taking advantage of this, another rodent scurries into Hugh's mouth. His throat bulges as it makes its way down his throat. As soon as this has occurred, the rodents, en masse, leave the cafeteria via a variety of exits. D1812019 has been reduced to a small pile of blood and viscera on the cafeteria floor. The rodents exiting the cafeteria via the south corridor encounter three members of site security who have been called to the team. Whilst they open fire, they are quickly overwhelmed by the number of rodents. Site director Hughes' body convulses as it is lifted into the air by an invisible force. It halts, levitating, as it begins to discharge rodents in a similar manner to D1812019. Estimates formed from CCTV footage place the number of rodents emitted from both D1812019 and Site Director Hughes between 1200 and 1700 instances. Sounds of movement and squeaking are audible from within SCP-6668-1. A new version of this page is available. Refresh. 11.56 a.m. Special containment procedures, all sighted staff are to make their way to the nearest evacuation point, escorted by security personnel. All staff are to avoid contact with SCP-6668, SCP-6668-2, and suspected SCP-6668-2 instances. Floors before through six of site A are to be considered lost. Excursion onto these floors is forbidden. Description SCP-6668 are anomalous rodents believed to originate from SCP-6668-1, a sinkhole in the floor of Site A's cafeteria. SCP-6668 are to be considered hostile, lethal entities. Upon encountering a human subject, SCP-6668 instances will attempt to enter their body cavities through an external body orifice. If they are unable to do so, they will create an artificial orifice through the use of their teeth and claws. SCP-6668 instances replicate through these human hosts, designated SCP-6668-2. Shortly after introduction of an SCP-6668 instance to a host 6668-2 instance, the latter will begin to disintegrate, generating numerous new SCP-6668 entities. 
Anecdotes relating to a mimetic effect compelling individuals to willingly offer themselves to SCP-6668 instances are currently unsubstantiated. Cited is currently undergoing a code black security breach relating to SCP-6668. Remaining site leadership have ordered an evacuation and requested the assistance of MTF Lambda-12 test control to aid in efforts to contain the anomaly. Security camera footage from within site H's cafeteria have captured instances of SCP-6668 swimming through the liquid at the bottom of SCP-6668-2. Addendum MTF incursion log. Incursion cancelled. Addendum. Evacuation order. Evacuation order overridden. Notice. By 05 Command Authority, Site A's evacuation order has been overridden. All staff are to shelter in place. Site A has been placed under quarantine. MTF Lambda 12 have been withdrawn. 05 Command are monitoring the situation closely. Please check here for updates. 12.09 p.m. Editing from phone, name is Andrea Peltier Researcher at Site 314. We're by the B-8 emergency exit please unlock the door you can still save us get us out please I you can't just leave us to die someone reason with O5 you can't just abandon us now there's no rats no one's infected for God's sake help us please. Unauthorized page edit overridden. Employees will disregard any restricted information they have been exposed to. Special containment procedures. Site is under quarantine. Excursion into the site is forbidden. O5 Command are currently deliberating on containment procedures for SCP-6668. Description, SCP-6668 are anomalous rodents believed to originate from SCP-6668-1, a sinkhole in the floor of Site H's cafeteria. SCP-6668 replicate through human hosts, SCP-6668-2. SCP-6668 are to be considered hostile, lethal entities. All suspected SCP-6668-2 instances are to be considered hostile, lethal entities. Security camera footage from within Site H's cafeteria have captured instances of SCP-6668 climbing a mound of other instances, ascending into the cafeteria from SCP-6668-1. O5 Vote Details Directive Statement Site H is lost Proposed Measures Activation of Site A's Morpheus security measure, emitting an inhalable sedative gas throughout the site. Activation of Site A's Hephaestus security measure, incinerating the entirety of the site interior, with the exception of designated containment cells. Eight hours after activation, an exploration of Site A by MTF Lambda 12 to confirm neutralization. Council vote summary. 0501 yay 0502 yay 0503 yay 0504 yay 0505 yay 0506 yay 0507 yay 0508 yay 0509 yay 0510 yay 0511 yay 0512 yay 0513 yay Status Approved A new version of this page is available. Refresh 8.58 p.m. SCP-6668 Situation Update MTF Lambda 12's exploration of the former Site 314 situation resolved Information blackout lifted, is in progress, no signs of life have yet been observed. The team have been unable to locate SCP-6668-1, the floor in the cafeteria appears as it did prior to this morning's events. A rodent of unknown origin, with burn wounds and scorched fur, was recently sighted in Central Asia. Ongoing situation, information blackout initiated, quarantine measures have been placed on standby. Excursion into the city is forbidden. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. 
If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.